Sutra Ujjushma came before the Buddha, put his palms together about at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, I can still remember how many compas ago I was filled with excessive greed and desire. There was a Buddha in the world named King of Emptiness. He said that people with too much desire turn into a raging mass of fire. He taught me to contemplate the coldness and warmth throughout my entire body. Commentary Ujjushma is a powerful royal lord. He is one of those whom this sutra refers to as the Vara sacred traces, that is, Dharma protectors. The history of these Dharma protectors was as follows. Limited, limitless compass ago, there was a wheel turning king whose first wife gave birth to a thousand sons. The wheel turning king understood the Buddha Dharma. He had this, his thousand sons draw lots. They would become Buddhas in the order of the numbers they drew. The thousand Buddhas of this Kampa, the worthy Kampa, are the sons of that will turning king. Kanakamuni Buddha became the first Buddha, and Shakyamuni Buddha was the fourth Buddha of the auspicious Kampa, so called, because it is a time when worthies and sages appear in the world. Another of the will turning king's wives had two sons. The elder son vowed that when each of his thousand brothers became a Buddha, he would go to that place and make offerings to them. The younger brother made a vow that when each of his brothers became a Buddha, he would go and protect him. He would be a rather powerful lord. Why does it say that he came before the Buddha instead of saying that he arose from his seat? This is because very powerful laws are spirits, and spirits cannot sit in the presence of the Buddha. They stand. There is no seat available to them in the Buddha's assemblies. As for ghosts, they are not only forbidden to sit down, they aren't even given a place to stand. They must kneel. The Dharma protectors must kneel to hear the Dharma. In this very assembly now, there are many ghosts kneeling to listen to the sutra. If you can see them yourself, you don't have to take my word for it. You can ask my disciple who has his five eyes open. He will tell you. Utrushma came before the Buddha, put his palms together, bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, I can still remember how many compas ago I was filled with excessive greed and desire. This person had a tremendous amount of desire. He was obsessed with women. He probably inherited it from his father, who, as a wheel turning king, also had a lot of desire and lust. At that time, there was a Buddha in the world named King of Emptiness. He spoke Dharma for me. He said that people with too much desire turn into a raging mass of fire. In the future, they will fall into the hells and be sealed by a furious fire. The first come one, King of Emptiness, taught me to contemplate the coolness and warmth throughout my entire body. Why do people have excessive desire? It comes from a fire of desire in the body. So the Buddha, King of Emptiness, had him return the light and look within at the fire in his own body. He observed the fire of his desire. Sutra, a spiritual light, coalesced inside and transformed my thoughts of excessive lust into the fire of wisdom. After that, when any of the Buddhas summoned me, they used the name Firehead. Commentary I contemplated the fire in my body, and after a long time, I came to up ball it and to be alarmed about it. Once I became alarmed, I no longer liked the thoughts of desire, and I gradually did away with them. Once they were gone, a spiritual light coalesced inside. He produced his own light and transformed my th thoughts of excessive lust into the fire of wisdom. A change took place in his obsessive thoughts of desire. They turned into a fiery wisdom. After that, when any of the Buddhas summoned me, they used the name Firehead. They called him Firehead Vara, 
or Tao Jin Gang. Sutra from the strength of the five light samadhi. I accomplished a hardship. I made a great vow that when each of the Buddhas accomplishes the way, I will be powerful mind and in person subdue the demon's hatred. Commentary from the strength of the five light samadhi. I accomplished a hardship. I then made a great vow that when each of the Buddha accomplishes the way, I will be a powerful knight and in person subdue the demon's hatred. When each of the thousand Buddhas of the worthy end accomplishes the way, I will be a powerful and great warlord, a big Dharma protector, and tame all the demons and enemies. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. I used attentive contemplation of the effects of heat in my body and mind until it became unobstructed and penetrating and all my outflows were consumed. I produced a blazing brilliance and ascended to enlightenment. This is the foremost method. Commentary The Buddha asks each of his disciples about perfect penetration. I used attentive contemplation of the effects of heat in my body and mind until it became unobstructed and penetrating and all my outflows were consumed. The effects of heat were turned into the fire of wisdom and my inherent nature within was unhindered and flowed freely. It burned away all my outflows and I produced a blazing brilliance and ascended to enlightenment. This is the foremost method, the best Dharma draw. Sutra, the Bodhisattva, maintaining the ground, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I remember when universal light first came and appeared in the world in the past. I was a big shrew who continually worked on making level the major roads, ferry landings, and the dangerous spots in the ground where the this repair might hinder or harm carriages or horses. I did everything from building bridges to hauling sand. Commentary The Bodhisattva, maintaining the crowd, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I remember when universal light first came and appeared in the world in the past. I was a bishu who continually worked on making level the major roads and ferry landings. When universal light first came on was in the world, I left the home life and was a bishu who repaired highways. Ferry landings here include a reference to law, to forts, to places where small streams crossed the path. He would place a piece of wood across to make it easy for people to pass by. He also repaired dangerous spots in the ground. Sometimes the earth would be rutted or bumpy or flat and broad. These were cases of disrepair, which means the path was impassable. The disrepair might hinder or harm carriages or horses. I worked on making this kind of roadways level. If there were ruts and potholes, I filled them. If there were bumps, I smoothed them out. I made the roads even. I did everything from building bridges to hauling sand. Sutra, I was diligent in this hard labor throughout the appearance of limitless Buddhas in the world. If there were beings at the walls and gates of the cities who needed someone to carry their goods, I would carry them all the way to their destination, set the things down and leave without taking any recompense. Commentary. I was diligent in this hard, hard labor throughout the appearance of limitless Buddhas in the world. This hard labor refers to such tasks as hauling sand and building bridges. He continued to do this kind of work during life after life. If there were beings at the walls and gates of the cities who needed someone to carry their goods, I would carry them all the way to their destination. If there were peddlers along the ways, along the walls and gates of the cities who sold goods that needed to be hauled, I would hold them either balancing the load on my head or back or carrying it in my arms.
When I got there, they wanted to go. I would set the things down and leave. I would unload the materials they bought and go on my way without taking any recompense. That means that he would not only not ask for and expect money, but he would refuse it if it was offered. This is the kind of ascetic practice that maintaining the ground bodhisattva practices. Sutra When the Buddha Vapashin appeared in the world, there was a worldwide famine. I would carry people on my back, and no matter how far the distance, I would only accept a small coin. If there was an ox cart stuck in the mud, I would use my spiritual strength to push the wheels and get it out of difficulty. Commentary When the Buddha the Pashin appeared in the world, there was a worldwide famine. No one had anything to eat. The Pashin means pervading everywhere with ease. Pian Yi Chia Zai. As a famine spread, people would evacuate areas on mats, trying to get out of the stricken places. Some people in the exodus could not walk and so maintaining the earth bodhisattva would carry them. I would carry people on my back and no matter how far the distance, I would only accept one small coin. Whether it was a short trip or a long journey, he always took the same amount of money, one small coin. I didn't want any more. If there was an ox cart stuck in the mud, I would use my, use my spiritual strength to push the wheels and get it out of difficulty. When it rained a lot, the water would stand in the roads and the mud would become so thick it was not easy for people to walk. When a cart tried to pass, it would get bogged, bogged down. Maintaining the ground, Bodhisattva said that he had great strength, a spiritual force, and so he would push the wheels and pull the cart out of its predicament. Sutra, once a king asked the Buddha to accept a vegetarian feast. At that time, I served the Buddha by leveling the road as he went. Papa Shin thus come and wrapped my crown and said, You should level your mind ground, then everything else in the world would be level. Commentary Once the king asked the Buddha to accept a vegetarian feast, the king of the country was a faithful follower of the Buddha, and he invited the Buddha to accept a vegetarian offering. At that time, I served the Buddha by leveling the road as he went. On the road the Buddha traveled, I smoothed out all the uneven places as he went along. Vipashin thus come and wrapped my crown and said, You should level your mind ground, then everything else in the world would be level. When the mind ground is even, all the other ground in the world would be even quite naturally. Maintaining the ground, Bodhisattva had worked for such a long time at leveling the earth which was fundamentally level to begin with, but he had been leveling things physically, while the ground of his own nature was not yet level. Vipashin first came and told him to level the ground of his own mind, for once he had done that, all other ground would be level as well. The mind ground just means the ground of one's own nature. Sutra, immediately my mind opened up and I saw that the particles of earth composing my own body were no different from all the particles of earth that made up the world. The nature of those particles of dust was such that they did not connect with one another, nor could they be touched by the blade of a sword. Commentary When I heard the Pashin explain this Dharma door, immediately my mind opened up. I became enlightened, and I saw that the particles of earth composing my own body were no different from all the particles of earth that made up the world. My body was made of particles of dust, nothing more, and they were the same as the particles of dust that composed everything else in the world. The nature of those particles of dust was such that they did not connect with one another. They did not come in contact with one another nor could they be touched by the blade of a sword. Even the, the stroke of a sword could not 
disrupt them and so could not harm my body because my body was the same as emptiness. I had no appearance of self. Sutra, within the Dharma nature, I awakened to the patience with the non-production of dharmas and accomplished a hardship. I brought my mind back to the extent that I have now entered the ranks of the Bodhisattvas. Hearing the first common proclaim the wonderful lotus flower, the level of the Buddha's knowledge and vision, I have already been certified as having understood and am a leader in the assembly. Commentary Within the Dharma nature, I awaken to the patience with the non production of dharmas and accomplished a hardship. I brought my mind back. I turned from the small and returned to the great to the extent that I have now entered the ranks of the Bodhisattvas. Hearing the first command proclaim the wonderful lotus flower, that is the great Suragama Samadhi, that subtle wonderful Dharma, the level of the Buddha's knowledge and vision, I have already been certified as having understood and am a leader in the assembly. I can testify to this Dharma door. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration upon attentive contemplation of the body and the environment. I saw that these two dusts are exactly the same, that fundamentally everything is the treasury of the first common, but that an empty falseness arises and creates the dust. When the dust is eliminated, wisdom is perfected, and one accomplishes the unsurpassed way. This is the foremost method. Commentary. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration upon attentive contemplation of the body and the environment. I saw that these two dusts are exactly the same. There is no difference between the body and mind and the world. I saw that, fundamentally, everything is the treasury of the first common, but that an empty falseness arises and creates the dust. Within the illusory falseness, defilement grows. When the dust is eliminated, wisdom is perfected and one accomplishes the unsurpassed way. This is the foremost method.